Hello folks, welcome to this video. Uh, a year or so ago I did a video, it's up on YouTube if you want to check out my other videos, on how you can test uh, stators on the ignition side for Honda CB250N and CB250T, the Dreams and the Super Dreams, uh, the 250 models. Um, that kind of went through on how you can do a test procedure on your stator just to find out, see whether it's faulty, whether you've lost a spark or so forth. Anyway, I've just received one in, uh, one of those stators. In fact, it's one of the most popular one I do because I do quite a few of them, um, you know, regarding ignition on these stators. So I just thought I'd just uh, show you uh, how I diagnose it and go into a little bit of deeper depth of actually pinpointing the problem that's on this stator here. If I get time I'll go through the uh, you know the stripping it down on the source coils and um, rewinding it and connecting it all back up again and hopefully I'll be able to show you how I do it. Okay so yeah we've got this stator here uh, it's come from a customer now the most common fault on these stators is <coughs> The when you've lost a spark or whatever, or it ain't running properly at low RPM or whatever, it's not picking up. Is the either one of these two coils here, which are the low speed source coils, power your CDI box to produce your spark? There's two of them on the 250N. Um, I call this the primary one, which is the larger one, and this is the secondary uh, low speed source coil. They're wired in series, so basically, they you know they work together. Um, now these two coils are connected to the white wire and ground um, so we can do an initial check on that so what we need to do is I hope you can see the multimeter and it should just be about visible there. Connect your multimeter set it to 2k 2000 ohms Put one probe on the white wire in the connector. Now some of the Honda, the early ones, had bullet connectors on them. This one's just got a uh, one piece uh, terminal block on it. Identify the white wire. Put one probe on the white wire, one to ground. And we're only showing 100 ohms there. Or alternatively you can put it on a green wire in that block connector. And it's reading the same because that's a ground and that's connected to ground. So yeah, we're only reading. You get it? Just over 90 ohms. Now that should be in excess of 300, 350 odd ohms. That, which is basically measuring between those two, two, two coils. Now, we'll do a quick check on the high speed source coil, which is this one here. And that would run at around about between five and seven. That's bang smack bang in the middle at 6 ohms so now we know that these two are reading low however I've been caught out before it's not always the case and I'm not saying that's the case with this one because those two cores the low speed source cores are actually joined to the uh, high speed source core there might not be anything wrong with those two cores it could be the fact that the high speed source coil is faulty or the connections inside there are faulty. These do suffer, these run dry on these engines um, and they do suffer from moisture and corrosion gets in there and it starts, uh, you know, breaking down the windings, etc., and shorting out. Now I'm suspecting that the connection on here is grounding out slightly giving you a false reading of these two coils here. So, but, we kind of have to, not butcher it, but we have to kind of disconnect a wire just to identify that. Uh, the white wire comes in um, and connects onto this, onto your high speed source coil, and then loops out to the other two coils, the low speed source coils. The other side of the high speed source coil comes out of it and comes out on the blue wire, hence the six ohms between those two wires. So what I'm going to do is you've got a 
a couple of link link wires from that low uh, high speed source coil that links round here to the back end or where it comes out on that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip the wire on that loop where it loops round and then take a measurement on that, which would be just you can do it anywhere you like, but in there and just in case it's not that you can always join it back up somehow anyway. Just just there and break it there. Okay, I'll do that. Get a pair of pliers. Right, okay, I've got a pair of pliers and I'll just see if I can snip that wire. If you can see it. Pull it out of the way. Okay, there. So now we've actually isolated all that from that white wire just by snipping that. Right, now I'll see if I can get a reading from that broken wire through these two coils just to see what ohms reading we get now. Multimeter. Put it onto ground. Clumsy this morning. Right now, look. Whoop. We shot up to 360 ohms, which is what it should be. So there, there. I proved a point that these are reading correct. Show you. Let's see if I can undo that wire. Get a screwdriver. Get out of the way. There we go. And see where the wire comes off. High speed source coil there. Now there's a junction there, three wires, one wire that goes into the coil, the other wire that comes up to the white wire, and this is the wire that came up to these two coils here. So let's just get a, a Stanley blade and see if we can just cut them back. Get a bit of exposed copper. Right, now there should be no continuity to ground on that, none at all. But I'm suspecting there is, and I'm pretty sure there is, because we were getting a low ohms reading on these two source coils. Now there we go, let's put that there. The ohms meter. There we go, we're showing 134 ohms on that, so we're getting some kind of continuity between that coil there and ground because there should be no continuity to ground at all even though we're getting our 5 ohms across that coil or 6 ohms technically the, the coils are right but it's grounding out somewhere in there as I said before these run dry these stators moisture gets in there and it, it shorts the circuit out so yeah, I think I pretty much diagnosed it. However, I'm going to rewind this. I'm going to do all three coils because it's... I mean, these are old now. 40 odd years old now. As a rule, I rewind both the two low-speed source coils and I've got no choice but to do the high-speed source coil. Now, these have got like a 0.14 wire on it, these two. But the high-speed uses a um, 0.3, so it's almost twice as thickness and it hasn't got so many turns on it. And it's got about 350 turns on that one, whereas these have got thousands of turns on it. So yeah, I mean the good thing about these 250 alternators is the fact that these other poles aren't wound here and you can get access to it quite easy. The 400 automatics are a different cut of fish because the charging wires cross over them and you've, they're difficult to do the high speed source coil on those. 
But anyway, I mean, I've checked the um, the pickup coils, the internal one and the external one. They're fine. They generally either give a reading or none at all. Um, and they very rarely give problems. I've never known an external one to give problems. However, uh, problems with the internal one, again, corrosion gets in there and it starts uh, messing with the laminations in there. Uh, it's a common fault. In fact, I've got another one in that's come in. The guy says it's not revving out, and I'm suspecting that's what it is. It's um, maybe got it right up here somewhere actually. Yeah, here's the other one. You might be able to see that that, that coil there, that one there, yeah. rust has got into it and it's critted it all up. Even though the readings are okay on that one, uh, that one won't be working properly to advance the ignition or for the advance of the ignition anyway. So I'm guessing that's what it is. That's another one I've got to do that came in yesterday. I've got to sort that out. So yeah, um, get down in the workshop, start stripping it down. You've got to be brutal with these things to get them apart. They've got resin inside them that's set for been set for forty years, and they're as tough as old boots to get apart. Um, most of the work is done in stripping them down and um, rewiring them. The actual rewinding of them doesn't take so long, but it's the um, stripping them down and preparing them to be rewound that takes the time. Um, so yeah, get in the workshop and we'll strip it down. See you down there. Right. So come down to the workshop. We're going to start ripping this thing apart. And as I said, you've kind of got to be a bit brutal with these to get them apart. So what we'll do, so we'll get that one apart. We'll get the windings off of that. Now, like I said, you've got three connections on this high-speed source coil. And this is the where, where the white wire comes in initially that joins up around here to that coil and that coil but we've disconnected it around there back in the office so here's the, the connection just here so we've got to be careful not to damage this wire here because that's the one that goes up to the white wire so if anybody knows any better way of doing it then please let me know but I'm suspecting that's where the uh, the shorting out the ground is at that point there so if we just break into that as I said without damaging that wire and there's the solder joint just there look it doesn't matter if we damage that wire there because we'll be replacing that pliers and just actually that's the wire that I cut and it comes and joins onto that coil there so what I'll do is I'll chop that actually no I won't I won't bother doing that I'll just so, gently pull that wire out the way trying not to damage it and get a pair of pliers It is quite jammed down in there actually, you just got to be careful not to damn it, break it. If you do, then you've got to... There you go, slowly coming out. This is jammed quite to close to that main AC charging coil. Breaks, then we'll have to fix it. Come on, there we go. So 
as your white wire that comes off of that white connection there and the blue connections on the back which is that one there and see if we can get which is as you can see it comes across here the output wire you can see you still see it just connected there the output wire from that coil there which is your blue wire that one's connected to the blue wire right so we need to get the wire off of here and then the only problem is it does run really close to that charging coil so we just got to be a bit careful See the wires are a little bit corroded. Oops. And careful not to damage all the insulation further down the pole or underneath the windings. It's inevitable that they will. a little bit of damage but we just try and minimize it There aren't that many turns on here, but it's a thicker wire. Anyway, you don't want to see me doing all this. I'll come back to it when I've almost done it. Right, so we've got the last bit of wire on there. Right, see, that hasn't done too bad. Usually the old insulation all breaks off, but... remained on there quite well actually as long as you're careful with it you can minimize as much as you can but we will have to obviously re-epoxy there because it's just showing bare metal laminated core so we got to clean that up and re-epoxy that but anyway that's where your white wire comes in you can just see it there it goes underneath and goes up that bit of where you start your winding, let's cover it over with a bit of tape. 
anything. It's the cable insulation, rotten. So I'm guessing it's just probably just shorted out just about down here. Yeah, just a mark. So yeah, just clean that up. Right, so that's the high speed source core. Unwound. I need to obviously clean it all up. Make it look nice and be nice. Re insulate it. These wires are okay. So, yeah, that one's ready for doing. So we've got the wire off the secondary low speed coil and you can see this bit of insulated wire here where the feed comes into it where you start the winding on it and that one there a bit of the wire comes in here comes turns around many turns comes out on the back and then loops around to that one so yeah almost got all the wire off that Damage done to that actually. Good job. Usually, what can happen is this when you start taking the wire off, all this booming insulation comes off. And you've got to re insulate it with some epoxy. Big bugger here. And that's where the work comes around there. Like. And the joint is just here. There, that's the joint there. As I said, a lot of the times taking and getting all the wire off and everything and preparing it and winding doesn't take too long. Well, at least I just leave my machine to do it. Now, here you've got the star point for the three AC charging coils. It's difficult to get the wire off, so you need to try and get this star point connection out of the way. Usually what they do is just break the insulation, if at all possible. And there we go, it's just gone, let's get the...
There we go. And that's your star point for your three phase charging. Just jammed in there. Just pop that out of the way. What I usually do is re epox it back in between that that gap there rather than put it back down there. Depends how I'm feeling on the day. That copper wire doesn't look too bad actually on there. But like I say, as a rule, I do these as a precaution because they don't. They are 40 odd years old now, and the warnings do are starting to fail on it. So yeah, you just got to keep hacking away at it until you get all the wire off. The actual winding starts on this point here. The ground point flat. And it's soldered on there, look. And the wire comes in here in the bottom of there. And then it gets wound and comes out of there. But anyway, you don't want to see me doing all that. When I get closer to the bottom, I'll come back. Before I go, I was actually going to contact the customer and say to him, you know, uh, it was just a high speed source core gone. Did you want the others done? Um, that's what I was going to say to him, but it's a good job I didn't because um, these, it's just as well do these anyway. And it's proved a point you can see the wire on the one of those low speed source cores, it's all frosted up. So it probably would have failed later on in life, but sooner rather than later, which we don't want. Um, so yeah, it just pays to do all three of them, get them done, peace of mind. End of. Right, so this is actually another stator because I ran out of time uh, filming on the other one. Um, I don't know, basically I forgot to do the filming and whatever one thing led to another and I got ended up getting it back to the customer but this is another one I've just had come in um, and I stripped it down to the same status as what that other one was so yeah so after removing the wire uh, like I said you kind of got to be a bit brutal with it getting it off um, you end up sometimes chipping the insulation the original insulation on it I don't know whether you see because this is blimmin' hot because I just warmed up in the little oven I got so so yeah, you can see on the main source cob pole, the insulation's broken off of that. Uh, and it's old, 40 years old, it breaks. Same on that one, and same on the corner of that one. And um, yeah, that side there as well. So we just got to re-epoxy that and smooth it all out, smooth all these edges up where the wire uh, wraps around on it. And um, yeah, I mean, I got it off and bead blasted it, so the old um, epoxy sticks to it well. So I'll mix up some glue and um, or epoxy, and we'll pop some on there just to re-insulate it. Right, okay. So I've mixed up a bit of epoxy, high temperature epoxy, 
resin or whatever you like to call it glue so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply it with it hello email come in right um, apply it to the bare metal areas Hello, Lofty. Oh, boy. Same with Jeffrey then. <laughs> oh, right, sorry about that. I had a visitor. So, so yeah, all we got to do is just re epoxy the areas where there's exposed metal so the uh, copper wire doesn't short out on it. So, I'll just put a bit on, a bit more on there. And then we'll file them down. And epoxy's going off a bit now. But there, so yeah, there. Put a little bit on here. It's always on the edges, it breaks off. Same second low speed coil, dump a bit of epoxy on there. Like I said, it's just to cover up the exposed metal. I mean, I have B blasted them just to get a good key on there. Do the same with that one, and all. I mean, that doesn't matter there, but I'll cover that up anyway. And the epoxy's just chipped off of there as well, so I'll put a bit on there. I mean, you don't need to see me doing that, so there we go. Uh, yeah, so I've just re epoxied those edges up where it was all chipped off and dressed it up with a file. Um, uh, on the large low speed the small low speed and the high speed coil um, so now yeah just gonna clean up a little bit more and be ready for putting some wire back on it but, um, I mean, it's a bit manky this stator I have had far worse in than this but uh, yeah you can bring them back to life again um, yeah they've all seen different weather and conditions on these and water gets in them so yeah they ain't too bad but uh, I've seen some really clean ones this one's about middle of the road right so yeah set it up in the winding machine um, I generally wind the high speed source coil this one here by hand it's got a much thicker wire on it my winding machine won't tolerate um, taking a point uh, point, is it, 0.3 wire um, and there aren't that many turns on there just under 400 turns on that one whereas this one's got 1200 about 1200 turns and this one's got about getting on 4000 turns on that one of uh, much thinner wire so yeah I'll do this one by hand and once I've done that I'll um, stick it in the winding machine to do the other two and then wire it all back up again Right, so to wind the high speed source coil, um, use a special uh, tube to put the wire down through. Before I used to get hold of these, I used to use the inside of a pen, the ink, and the, you know, the cartridge or whatever you call it, the, the ballpoint section. I used to feed the wire down through it. And then wind the wire around but now I managed to get these from a company called Euro tubes and just about get this 0.3 wire down inside of it so yeah feed the wire through and then we need to put a bit of insulate insulation over the top Right, so we've got some acrylic insulation, wire insulation. 
so I don't know whether you can see that or not we need to cut a length just probably about I don't know three quarters an inch to an inch and thread that through the through there and place that on there basically because that insulates the wire as it comes in and stops it from shorting out right okay get a bit of super glue there stick that in place and it gets on your fingers what you do is just wind it around and get the layers as even as you possibly can minimizing the overlap right okay so we've wound the wire on there and on that core there layered it as best we can so I know we need to do is just do an ohms check on it and make sure it's about right uh, cleaned up the uh, enamel covering on it let's see what we've got it's always difficult to get a connection on these sometimes there we go 5.9 ohms it's about right six ohms depending on the temperature it's quite warm in here so that will be a little bit higher than right okay so now yeah we'll just recap on that so that's where the wire comes in do your turns on it clockwise looking from the top and that's where the wire exits it'll come out on the blue wire um, one thing we didn't check which uh, should have done Let's make sure we haven't got any continuity to ground. So we don't want that going to ground now, do we? Right, there. Right. But we've got nothing to ground, so that's not short on the ground now. Like it was before. Right, okay, we're set up in the machine and wind the two low speed coils. Three days. We're now going to do the large low speed source coil in the winding machine. Now, I used to do this by hand, but um, one, it wasn't really accurate, but there was never a problem with it. Um, and it's, uh, I won't say so much quicker, it's just. Um, you can leave it to do its own thing and I can always get on and do something else. So, okay, so we've got it set up in the machine. Um, the wire comes in just down here at the end of the screwdriver, off the ground point here. Um, feeds along this little bit of insulation uh, sheathing um, and then starts at the top of the coil. Uh, probably going out of focus and then starts at the top of the coil. And we'll put a few turns on that and then set her in swing and get out okay, we've got okay we've got the Mac 3 program loaded um, on the computer and everything's all turned on we've got all the got the program loaded in it for that particular coil that low speed source coil this larger one so it's loaded in there now Without further ado, let's click the old start cycle button and get it wind in.
and as you can see it's winding wire on there. And it'll do one pass. Okay, right now we've wound our wire on that low speed pole and got the turns on it. Now, just to be sure, we're going to be just measuring the resistance across the wire that comes in, which is this twisted wire here, which goes to the ground, and um, the wire that comes up out of the uh, needle. So, I'll move the Camera over to the sorry, I'm not very good at this. Whether well, you can see that or not, right? Okay, so we've got the meter rigged up there, got one probe on that wire there. I've already There we go, we've got 289 ohms on that coil. And then we'll just check it and make sure it's not grinding out. No, no, which is good. Right, so that's that coil done. We will now proceed to do the smaller coil. Okay, now. I've got the machine set up to wind the small low speed source coil which is which is that one and I'll put the wire on it or we'll wind a turn or two on it and so the wire I've got the flow lead coming off of here where it comes in which actually comes out from the big coil that we just wound it loops into that we'll uh, attach that later on so it comes up this bit of insulation again and then it starts starts to turn on it so we'll get that going uh. right that's it all the winding's done now that one's finished now and just got to go down the workshop and connect all the wires up Right, here we are. Now the stator's all done. I've uh, over joined all the wires up, so we'll just recap on what we did. We wound the high speed source coil and the two low speed source coil, the smaller one and the larger one. Um, so the larger one the coil starts on the ground at this point here that I've um, epoxied over goes in to the coil a few thousand turns on there and comes out here on the wire loops round the back comes in on the front of this coil here goes in there a few thousand well just over a thousand turns on that one and then comes out loops around comes to the front of the high speed source coil um, which is joined to the white wire uh, up to the white wire here and also goes into the high speed source coil which then comes out on the blue wire on the back here which is the blue wire on there so we'll just confirm the readings with the multimeter so turn the meter on First of all, we need to do a test between white and ground, or white and green. So I put it on the white terminal, 
the ground. We're showing 370 ohms there, give or take a bit, which is good, which is measuring between that coil and that coil. And then we are measuring also, we'll also do between white and green, which is bolted to the ground on there, make sure we've got a good ground on there. It's given the same reading there, so we know we've got a good ground on the green wire. And then we need to test the high speed source coil, which is that one, which has only got a, 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 you know, a few hundred turns on that one, but a thicker wire. So we need to go between white and blue. And we're showing six ohms on that, we'll drop that down to 200. It's showing 5.6 which is about right, I hope you can see that on the camera so yeah, that's all just going to let the old resin on the outside dry off in the sunshine it got a little bit of skag on the um, inner pickup coil, the high speed pickup coil but I've seen them worse than that and they still run fine uh, we've just double checked the reading on that one which is the pink to ground giving us about 17 ohms which is about right and we'll do the pickup coil to ground which 144 so that one's good they either work or they don't they don't either do give a reading or don't at all um, so yeah, that's ready to go back to the customer. Well, I hope that gives you some kind of insight on how I rewind the ignition system or the source cores on these stators. It's a common fault on them. Um, I get at least one a week in, sometimes maybe even be four a week to do on these old super dreams. I'm surprised there's still that many still on the road, but. Um, uh, good, for, good for me <laughs> but um, yeah it's one of the popular ones I do um, so yeah uh, so that will be going back to the customer shortly out in the post and a bit like I get that back by the weekend and he'll be up and run playing around on his bike um, I've tested it on my um, I've got a 450 Honda 450DX um, that I can test it on um, I've got a flywheel off a of 250 and all the rest of the electronics, the CDI and stuff. I put it on there and it run, runs a treat. But uh, yeah, as I said at the beginning of the video, um, just because you're getting a low reading on the low speed source cores, it doesn't always mean that it is those cores that give the issue. Um, it's generally, it can be that joint there on the high speed joint where the white wire comes around and joins onto it and it starts to ground out and gives you a false reading and basically it's shorting those out to ground and it's not getting the full full current up the white wire um, but as a rule because these stators are so old now it's always worthwhile doing the, the low speed source cores um, it just um, otherwise sometimes they end up coming back I've had it before in the past you know, a few weeks later, you just do that one, and then they fail, or you just do those two, and then that one fails, and it gives you a false reading again. So you do all three of them. As I said, the the two pickups I've never known that the two fifty pickups ever give any problems unless they've been submerged in water for months. And um, but I can't. I suppose I could try rewinding one, but there's no point because there's a lot of second hand ones, good second hand ones, which do the job. Um, sometimes they're a bit of an issue with the inner pickup, the high speed pickup, where um, I can rewind those, and this one's just the laminations just starting to expand a bit on it. But I've seen them worse than that, and they still run fine, um, so there's no point in doing that. Um, so, yeah, all good to go. Go back to the customer, and with a bit of luck, he'll be up and running again soon. I've got them listed on the website. If you want to send us one, I can do it. 
Um, I usually carry them exchange on the shelf. However, I prefer to do stators that customers send to me because I mean all the wiring is the same as what they've taken what it connects to on the bike. It makes life easier rather than messing around with plug connectors. But I generally got other stators around kicking around for those bikes, using for spares and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I've got them on the website um, listed on there. Um, very rarely the charging fails on them. These these charging coils fail on these. Um, uh, it's sometimes and people end up putting a screwdriver through the flywheel to undo the flywheel bolt and end up mashing it all and all that. There's a bit of carelessness on some people that try and get the flywheels off the bike, but that doesn't happen very often. Um, so yeah, anyway. Got loads more to get on with, so I better crack on with them. And thanks for watching, and we'll catch up on the next video when I get time to do it. Bye for now.